here's Ed Bernstein. Hi, welcome to our show. Um, you know, we've been doing this show for nearly 30 years. Uh, my first show was in January of uh, 1989. It was a week after my daughter Dana was born. Um, that's relevant today because we're here to talk about a, an illness that she was afflicted with her whole life until she passed earlier this year, uh, Crohn's disease. And um, with me today is Dr. Uh, Christian Stone, uh, Clara uh, Cruden, and uh, Avery Link. And we're here to talk about a little bit about Crohn's disease because it's still, you know, somewhat, uh, you know, unknown what it is and. What, what the effects are, and also about an event we have coming up uh, called Taking Steps, right, Clara? Yeah, Take Steps. It's going to be May 19th at Sunset Park at 8 a.m., and we'd love for everyone to come out and join and help find a cure for this terrible disease. Yeah. You know, you know it's, most people's familiarity with Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, or both of those diseases are coming under a, a category of inflammatory bowel disorder disease. Um, Dr. Stone, when you see commercials for, um, and there's a lot of them for drugs like Humira, which were not available when my daughter was diagnosed, but to the uh, typical viewer, they seem to downplay the severity. I mean, when you look at these commercials, it looks like, hey, this is a bowel disease that just causes you to go to the bathroom more than other people. Right. It's, but it's, it's life-threatening. I mean, my daughter died from it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a wide spectrum of disease. Right, so some patients might have milder cases and others are moderate or more severe. So it really depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. And uh, so those ads that you see on television are generally for the patients who are more moderate to severe. But in Crohn's disease, that's actually the majority of patients. So it's not many that have just mild disease. So many patients need those uh, stronger medications and immunosuppression to control symptoms. And, and can you give just a, a layman uh, description of what, how the Crohn's disease occurs and what causes it? Sure. So it's a chronic inflammation of the intestinal tract. It can affect any part of the tract. There's two different categories of inflammatory bowel disease. It's Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. They're slightly different, but the medications are really very similar for both uh, types of diseases. And uh, we don't know exactly what causes Crohn's disease and colitis, but uh, we're getting closer and there's a lot of new medications out and every year there's more and more uh, medications being tested and we have trials available for example even in Las Vegas for uh, patients who are uh, having trouble or have lost the, the ability to, to be treated with other medications. Yeah. And, and Claire, you're on the, the, Borners, uh, the Crohn's and Colitis board. Um, Dr. Stone's talking about trials. I mean this is something that typical patient doesn't really know about. I mean, how do, you, how do you find out about trials and resources? Well, with Crohn's and Colitis, the website, they have a great updated website that has all of this information on it. And also we're getting the, we're educating our providers more all over the world as far as these trials and when they're available and how they can come about it. So we're educating the providers in the front end so that the providers can give that information to their patients. So that's what we're trying to do. But if you go to the Crohn's and colitis website it has information about the trials and it talks about certain things if you have it if you're eligible to be a part of that trial right. and it affects so much of the family and as well as so many different elements of, uh, of somebody's essence you know it's uh, this is an illness when it affects your gut it affects your mood your emotions your you know, psychologically psychiatrically uh, uh, physically energy um, I mean and they say uh, Dr. Stone that there's a direct connection between the brain and the gut yeah you know, how, how does that work so it's a neurologically based. So mm -hmm. the brain and the intestines connect to each other by a nerve. It's the vagus nerve, one of the largest nerves in the body. Um, and so there's communication back and forth between the brain and the intestinal tract all the time. So your mood might affect your intestinal symptoms or your symptoms will affect your mood. And this is constantly going back and forth and it'll affect patients with irritable bowel. Uh, it'll affect patients with inflammatory bowel. Uh, and so this is something that we've learned over the last 10 or 15 years a lot more about. Uh, but sometimes we have to treat the brain even to help the gut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, Avery, uh, you just came or re recently, or I guess last year, right at a camp 
Yeah, right. We have. I mean, one of the things that uh, the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation has, they have all this wealth of information, services, and resources. One of them is a camp for teenagers. Can you yeah. talk about that? Um, it's a really great camp. Honestly, one of the best aspects about it is that it's a place where people who have Crohn's or colitis can go and just feel normal and have it's have like an everyday camp experience. Mm -hmm. You get to do a high ropes course, go in the lake, swim, have fun, and just meet people who are just like you, especially when you might feel like you're different. It definitely helps to like um, kind of immerse people into having fun and like getting away from the disease, but still like being able to live. Now, do you talk about it a lot in school and to your friends? I mean, here you are at your own television talking about it. It takes courage. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's difficult to talk about it when you're, you know, 17 years old like you are. Um, do you readily talk about it? Yeah, I mean, I, when I was first diagnosed, I was definitely scared mm -hmm. and reluctant to um, discuss uh, my Crohn's. But as I have um, lived with it over the few years, I... Um, I've just realized that it's a part of who I am and it's not going to be something that I can ever get rid of. And well, as of now with medicine, mm -hmm. <laughs> who knows in the future we might oh, be able true. to. Yeah. But for now, I, it's a part of me and I live with it every day and I don't see any reason why I should be ashamed of that. Yeah, you know, one of the issues that, uh, that our family's always experienced with this illness is a lack of energy. When you get sick, I mean, you can't even get out of bed. Yeah. And, um, and I know with my daughter, it affected her schoolwork dramatically. I mean, there was days, weeks, sometimes months that she couldn't go to school. Have you had that kind of difficulty? Um, I for have been fortunate enough recently. I've been on Humira, and it's mm -hmm. done a fairly good job of keeping me healthy. but. Before I was on that, I was definitely sick a lot. I had a lot of flare-ups. I would take weeks off from school, and just it was it was definitely hard. Um, I uh, my teachers, they're all thankfully understanding, right. and they were like easy on me and allowed me to be able to catch up. No, oh, that's good. And you're going away to college? Yeah. Next year? Yeah. Right? University of Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> you a football fan? Um, yeah. Um, well, coming from Gorman, <laughs> you probably are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I grew up on uh, Michigan football because both my parents went there, so uh, it's okay. definitely. You already have this, this sweatshirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you talked about uh, Take Steps mm -hmm. event coming up. What exactly is the event? So basically, it's we, we asked a community to come out and support Crohn's and colitis awareness. A lot of people that aren't affected by it, or a family or a friend hasn't been affected, they don't, they, don't, they don't know what Crohn's and colitis is. So this is basically, we come together as a community, and we have teams that sign up for Take Steps, mm -hmm. and all the money that goes towards it goes towards research. So we basically have pushed out flyers, and we're trying to make more awareness to the community to come out May 19th at 8 a.m. at Sunset Park and it's just basically bring bring your pets bring your children bring family and friends and it's just a gathering to support those that are um, battling this disease to come out and um, help and support and to raise money so that more money can go to research for Crohn's and colitis and here in Southern Nevada we're a foundation for Crohn's and colitis but we're not an actual chapter we piggyback with the Arizona chapter and we'd like to become our own chapter but in order to do that we have to have enough money raised for Southern Nevada and we have to do that for a period of time and and we just have not been able to get the awareness out to our community so that we can become a chapter and get the support of Southern Nevada so that the monies can go towards here and also help find a cure for Crohn's. Yeah, I remember uh, Dr. Stone, when my daughter was first diagnosed and I kind of referred to this, they didn't really have the medicines and the science to really understand inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, it was kind of an unknown entity. Nobody knew where it came from, how it got there, or where it was going. Um, and it was a kind of like you, you would try one drug, and if that didn't work, you go to the next drug, and, and so on and so forth. And you know, my family went through that, all that. But today, I mean, Avery is, you know, um, 
doing well. I don't know if you use the word remission or what, what word you use, but I mean, she's doing well mm -hmm. on, on a drug, uh, mm -hmm. which is really was created for rheumatoid arthritis, right? Was it? It's Originally, yeah. Right, because there are autoimmune aspects that are similar with inflammatory bowel disease with rheumatoid arthritis. Correct. Yeah, so inflammation in the body, there's only only certain number of ways that that the body can produce inflammation. So those pathways that produce inflammation in the joints might be similar to the ones that produce inflammation in the gut. Mm -hmm. And so that's why there's a lot of crossover between, uh, within these medications. They're used for a number of different inflammatory conditions. And so you know, back in the old days, we had very few medications, like you said. Uh, there were only two, prednisone and let's say azathioprine, for example. Right. Uh, but then in 1998 is when the first biologic was produced, and that was uh, infliximab. And then Humira became available uh, for Crohn's disease after that. And now we have four or five uh, different biologics available for Crohn's and colitis. And there's still more. And now the next wave of medications are coming out, which are new pill forms that are different than what we had before. Oh, so there's a lot nice, of, yeah. lot of uh, uh, medications available now. Right. And the research and the science is changing as well, right? I mean, now we're working on trying to identify specific genes that so we can treat, uh, match up certain uh, patients with certain um, uh, pharmaceuticals, right? Yeah, that's, that's a goal of, of the research, but unfortunately we're still a little bit far away from getting there because this is a difficult uh, disease state. There's a lot of different genes involved. It's not just one or two. Uh, and so the profile in any individual is very different than another person. So we ha we're not quite to the point where we can identify exactly which drug is best for a particular patient, but we're getting there. And little incremental steps with all the research, CCFA pr provides a lot of mm -hmm. funding for that. Um, but we're getting closer and we have, it's, it's really like a revolution of medications for, for inflammatory bowel right now. And it's changing so, so, so rapidly. I mean, that's why I think that if somebody um, thinks that they have uh, symptoms of this illness or have been diagnosed, that you get to a, um, a gastro who is familiar with the state of the art of what's going on because the research and the, uh, and the science is changing so dramatically um, with microbiomes and, um, and genetic testing and, and so forth. Now, Clara, how did you get involved in this illness? So my daughter Jacqueline was diagnosed with Crohn's, severe Crohn's, 11 years ago, and she was a sophomore in college. She came home for the Thanksgiving holiday and was complaining about severe abdominal pain and went and took her to the emergency room three times, and they couldn't figure out what it was. So they thought, well, it was an appendix. So they took her out her appendix, and then come to find out, they came in and said, you have Crohn's. And we're like, well, what is Crohn's? We have never heard of Crohn's. And one thing, as a mother of a child that gets diagnosed with this is there was no support. They didn't have a pamphlet. The, the general surgeon was very negative about it, was more saying, you're going to have to alter your life. You're going to have to quit college. You're going to have to move home, and your life is going to change forever. And I was like, no. She's not going to move home. She will beat this, and she will learn to live with this. So, you know, she had to battle with the fact that at that time, 11 years ago, it was such a negative disease, and it was just like they, it was more given like it's chronic, it's, there's not going to be a cure, and you're just going to have a miserable life. And I can say from 11 years ago to now, huge improvements. There's a big support crew, uh, support with Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, and there's also where I think when you get diagnosed with Crohn's, the one thing that people don't realize with this disease is you look normal on the outside. You, it, it's not a disease that it, that's shown on the outside of the body. You're suffering internally. And when you go to an emergency room or you go to urgent care when you're having a flare-up, a lot of physicians don't understand the pain that's associated with that. They're thinking, oh, you're just wanting pain medicine. That's not true. It's, it's, a, it's a very painful disease. And everyone thinks because you look normal that you can function normally, but you can't. Since she's been diagnosed, she did she did graduate from college in the four years, and she did have a great job as a junior publicist in a firm in Los Angeles, but then she ended up having to have surgery, and she ended up having a, a, a foot of her colon removed, and that changed things for her. And now she's better, 
but still not 100%. She's never been in remission. We're the closest now. She started a new medication that just came out two years ago called Stellara. That's made a huge improvement for her. So now she can see the light at the end of that tunnel. But at the beginning, when we first got diagnosed with this, there was very little information about Crohn's and colitis. So I am I'm very proud that Crohn's and colitis has really stepped up and has really done a remarkable job getting us where we are today and I see such a bright future for patients like you that have a future and that there are medications and I think the key with this disease is catching it early and when Jacqueline was diagnosed it took them four or five times to run different tests. They didn't really know which tests would really show it. Now we have that where the doctors know exactly what tests to run and they can diagnose Crohn's or colitis early and then know what type of medication. The one thing is every patient is different. So they have to try, like Avery is treated a certain way, but one medication will work for her, but it won't work for the next patient that walks into Dr. Stone's office. So it's basically, you have to start from scratch with each patient. That's what's so frustrating with this disease. Wouldn't you concur to that? Yeah, and it's, it's time consuming. Uh, it's a big burden on the patients. It's hard on the physician's offices because the patients require a lot of care. They're chronically ill. Uh, we have to do a lot of uh, we have to hire extra staff just to get approvals for the medications. Mm -hmm. so it's hard on the offices. Uh, it takes a lot of time uh, to see the patients. Mm -hmm. um, and a couple other points is remission is always the goal. Yes. Uh, so in addition to uh, making an early diagnosis and treating early, we have to always be aggressive. That's my approach is to be aggressive and always aim for that remission. If a medication is not working, you quickly move on. You mentioned earlier about how in the old days, we used to try something that doesn't work, try something else. Unfortunately, we're still kind of having to do that, but hopefully quickly moving on to other medications if, if the current one's not working. Yeah. Avery, did you um, experience what, uh, what Clara was talking about, where you feel this uh, horrific pain on the inside, but you look okay, and people tend to kind of dismiss it, be, oh, no, you, you look fine, you're okay. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's um, certainly been an experience of mine. I just because it's a lot of people refer to Crohn's as an invisible illness because it truly is invisible like you cannot see it right. I can feel it but nobody else knows mm -hmm. what that feels like yeah and unless they have Crohn's I guess uh, and then you know so much of this we talk, Dr. Stone was talking about the, uh, the the brain and the gut I mean stress and those type of factors can create bring on an attack right yeah for me definitely um, I've experienced um, flare-ups, especially when like I, my wife is feeling stressful like with school right. or finals or AP tests. Well, when you're 17, isn't everything stressful? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it gets less stressful as you get older. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and I think the other yeah. thing too with this illness that's important that I want to get out there too is if you are recently diagnosed mm -hmm. is definitely go and see a therapist or even see a psychiatrist. There's nothing wrong with going and talking to someone that can help you reason with the new diagnosis and help you navigate through it so that you can get your head wrapped around it because it is a very emotional disease. And there's a lot of Crohn's and colitis patients that are suffering, suffering by themselves and aren't reaching out and we have new studies now and we just put out on the website based things on how to eat nutrition it's always been where the doctors have said oh well you eat whatever you want well now they've done a study and a lot of the information from that case study is out now on the website that tells you certain foods that would be good for the gut and when you're on a flare-up what to eat and those kinds of things and then the other study they're doing now is mental health mental awareness with patients that are diagnosed with Crohn's and colitis and when to go and seek professional help and there are certain medications that can be given to you if you are suffering from anxiety with this disease and a lot of patients don't know that they can go out and go see a therapist or a psychiatrist and they can get that those emotions under control and feel better because it is mentally exhausting when you have this disease. Can I get Yeah, sure. It? So that's a very important point that Clara makes is because just like there's a spectrum of disease in terms of severity, there's also a big variety in the way that patients cope with the disease. 
So I have patients, for example, that have fairly mild disease, but they're kind of incapacitated by it mm -hmm. mentally. So they don't want to go to school, they don't want to work, they feel defeated. And then I have patients with really severe disease, young like you, and yet they're still going to school. They're sicker than anybody else, but they're not letting them stop it. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not letting the disease yeah. stop them. And so I see that a lot. There's a very big variety in the way they cope with the disease. Right, so in, in outside the medical area, there's tools that are available. You, you spoke about mm -hmm. diet. And it's not like you would know what kind of diet works right. best. I mean, because you would think that uh, like being a vegetarian would be a positive thing. It's not necessarily correct right. for treating this illness. So getting the, the correct information is important for the diet. You just can't go on a diet Right. on your own. Right. Um, things like uh, meditation, mm -hmm. stress uh, uh, tools to, to modify your stress, um, mm -hmm. exercise, uh, um, those type of things all help to avoid this kind of flare-ups, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, one thing like they were saying with uh, mental health, one thing that has helped me is uh, seeing a therapist, you know, just having someone to be able to talk mm -hmm. to and help me and like even just give me tips on how to like uh, let go of stress in my life and just not let it um, wear on me so much. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a whole online community, yes, there is. particularly of teenagers, right? Yeah. I know yeah. my daughter is very active in that and had a lot mm -hmm. of friends from all over the world. Yeah. Right. This is not an illness that just occurs in America, yeah. right, Dr. Yeah. Stone? I mean, this is uh, everywhere. It's mm -hmm. everywhere, and it's very common in Las Vegas, uh, mm -hmm. North America, Canada. Most industrialized countries, Europe, uh, yeah, Europe definitely, yeah. and it's emerging in a developing world as well. Uh, so as as countries become more westernized, there's more Crohn's and colitis. We don't know exactly why, but that's what's happening. And so it's not going away, unfortunately. Um, and like I say, in, in Las Vegas, there's a lot of patients with Crohn's and colitis. I there's too many for me to handle. I can guarantee you that. Well, let's talk about some of the symptoms that should cause somebody to seek medical advice. Okay, obviously, what, pain in, in, yeah. your, in your belly, right? Yeah, for me, I went to the ER because I had extreme intestinal pain, and my dad was concerned that uh, it could have been my appendix, and so he's like, we have to take you to the and ER right now. And your dad's a, f a physician, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so he was concerned um, it could have been my appendix, so he's like, we have to take you to the ER right now. Right. Like, we gotta get on this, because that's really bad mm -hmm. and <laughs> yeah and so we actually have done that more than once before I was diagnosed they're like right. oh no yeah she's fine her appendix is okay and then finally they're like you have Crohn's <laughs> right so abdominal pain that doesn't go away in what period of time could co which would cause somebody to seek yeah, medical so, advice so these are chronic conditions so right. this is not something that would happen one day and then go away the next mm -hmm. typically that wouldn't happen so we're talking about pain that's either recurring or chronic in the, in the range of weeks. Right. Uh, in her case, have a very typical presentation where there's pain in the right lower quadrant. And in young people, they're especially confused with appendicitis. appendicitis yeah. uh, but once it becomes obvious that it keeps happening, it's chronic, then that's when the, uh, the light bulb will go on and start thinking about Crohn's disease. Yeah, I mean, this is what happened to Clara's daughter and my daughter. I mean, they took their appendix out and pain didn't go away. Right. <laughs> right. And right. the other thing yeah. I think that's affiliated with that is the chronic urge to have to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. or the constipation or the diarrhea. So this disease is a very personal disease that you don't want to talk and about. That's what, it that is. It's, lies of, my daughter always said the, the problem with inflammatory bowel disease was the, is the word bowel. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. Because the, people don't like to, and that's why I have to commend you yeah. for being so courageous to talk yeah. about it. I mean, it's not it's not easy, and you know, you're such a beautiful young girl to come out and, and mm -hmm. you know be vulnerable like that. It's it's really brave. Thank it you. is, and it tells you just how far we've come. Now, here's a patient that completely has a different attitude about it, and feel and feels like you know mm -hmm. she's she's in remission. She can go on about her daily activities. She's excited about college, and that's where we want to be with this disease. We want people. We don't want the disease to control them. Them. We want them to control the disease. And that's the thing. We want to find a cure. Because with this disease, it is very personal. And you are one of the fears that my daughter has is going and doing things and being too far, far from a bathroom. 
That is the right. other thing that Crohn's and colitis you, you patients have to plan have. your whole day. You do. Right. You do. So and and you know what? It is very personal because you do have these strange sounds that come out of you, and you can't control when you're going to have to go to the bathroom. You got like seconds to get there. So that's a thing with today's modern medicine. Those are things that we're working towards to help these symptoms and have these symptoms go away and, and give them back their lives so that they go can go out and function. Yeah. Well, points with regard to symptoms, um, everybody's different, yes. and the symptoms depend on the location of the disease. Mm. So, if you have only a small intestine disease like you had, you might not have as much diarrhea. If you have colonic involvement, the colon's inflamed, then you tend to get more diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And so, every patient again is different. And the last point is, you could also have irritable bowel on top of mm -hmm. Crohn's or colitis. Mm -hmm. So, you need to treat that separately after you've treated the inflammation. So how, how do you diagnose? What's the, the best tool you use in diagnosing this? It's a combination of things. Um, there's no one test that proves it. Uh, not even a biopsy of the, of the intestines will prove it necessarily. Uh, so it's a, it's a, the whole picture has to fit. You need to have a uh, compatible presentation, x-rays that are consistent with the disease, biopsy, and then hopefully a response to treatment. So everything together makes the diagnosis. Does a colonoscopy really help? It's almost universal that you need a colonoscopy, at least to get a biopsy. You need to show that chronic inflammation uh, on a biopsy. And uh, keep in mind that there are patients who are misdiagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, I've found that more patients are misdiagnosed with Crohn's or colitis when it's something else, mm. rather than actually missing it, at least in the adults. Well, there, therein lies the importance of getting checked up mm -hmm. regularly, getting your colonoscopy. At what age now we recommend a colonoscopy? So for regular screening for colon cancer at average risk, then you start at age 50. Right. Yeah. But uh, I would tell my friends at 40. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Christian Stone, gastroenterologist uh, at Clara Cruden uh, from the Crohn's and Colitis uh, Foundation, and uh, Avery Link. Uh, hey, good luck at the University of Michigan. Thank you. And, and the, the camp, again, is Camp Oasis. If you want information, you go onto the Crohn's and Colitis website. Just Google CCAF, <laughs> right? Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, I would think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yep. See you next week.